to be the best, you have to beat the best. We are just days away from making history. September 17th marks the coming of a new era in the world of submission grappling. The ADCC World Championships is about to go down, and the best grapplers from all over the world have assembled for a show unlike any other. 88 kilograms, 194 pounds, these 16 gold medal hopefuls will all attempt to climb the tallest peak in submission grappling. But waiting for the field of newcomers is an established champion, hungry to defend his throne. Will this be a changing of the guard? A moment in time that will forever be remembered as the year the new generation took over? Or will we once again learn that there is no substitute for hard work, experience, and wisdom. This can only end one way. 16 will enter the gauntlet, and one by one, they will fall short of achieving greatness until only one champion remains. This is an unparalleled look into the lives and mindsets of the individuals marching towards battle on September 17th. See how they train, prepare, and approach this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This is the most exciting submission grappling competition in the world. Welcome to the ADCC Path to Glory, 88 kilograms, old guard versus new generation. I'm gonna grab one ankle, hand on my chest, on my head. We're gonna be able to get the two on one, but he's gonna come up, right? As he come up, I gotta be quick with my other foot. Three ways we can apply the other foot. We can apply on the hip, right? We can let go the arm, the la hiva, right? Or we can go inside. They call him King Kong, and he is the reigning defending ADCC champion. For the last 10 years, Mateus has called New York home, following in the footsteps of his coach and mentor, Marcelo Garcia. Denise has conquered this tournament once before. Now, he wants to do it again. I was always want to compete at ADCC, especially training with Marcelo. All the history, Marcelo literally is like the gold of, you know, grappling and jiu-jitsu. I feel my style, it's like I can be rough, I can be technical, I can play guard too, I can do everything. I feel my game is perfect for ADCC. And 2019, it was my first ADCC, and I never done any ADCC trials, I never competed in any ADCC rules. Nobody got close to scoring me. I had the most takedowns in ADCC, the most guard passes, so... Now, I've been training a lot under the rules better. I'm actually studying videos now, something that I've never done it before. So that's why I believe I can go there and win it again. You know, he's a really good competitor. He's a big powerhouse, you know, strong, explosive, experienced. You know, obviously he's, he's won the event before. When my mind's in the right place, I can beat anyone. And I don't think I ever show my 100% potential when I'm there. People that are around me and people that see me know that. I'm working each day, every day to get there and be able to pull my 100% game. I'm confident, I'm ready. I'm gonna defend my title and win it again. I feel my divisions, a lot of new names. I really like the challenge to face new guys. I'm Jay Rodriguez, AKA J-Rod. I train at a B team in Austin, Texas. I've been training Jiu Jitsu for a year and a half. What Jay Rodriguez lacks in experience, he makes up for with his relentless gas tank and kill or be killed attitude. Forging his own ADCC path forward, Jay not only won the toughest trials event ever, he submitted all seven of his opponents to claim gold and punch his ticket. Two worlds. 
J-Rod killed it at the trials. To be honest, he wasn't even the one that I picked from our team to win trials. When he went, obviously, surprised all of us. Took the guy down and strangled him pretty fast. Put one hook in, soon after I'm putting my second hook in and strangling. And then immediately put two hooks in and start strangling. And I immediately started locking up the rear naked choke and strangle him standing. And I soon get another hook in and then strangle him. And I took my knuckles and I dug it into his neck. That's what ended up finishing the buggy choke. <laughs> that was wild. It was just a different kind of animal when, when he stepped on the mat. In here, he's focusing on getting better and learning, but man, when it's go time, it's go time. Cardio is very important to my game. I want to have constant pressure on my opponent. I want to wear my opponent down. Four or five minutes into the mess, their arms are gonna be gassed, they're gonna be tired. They'll be heavier on their feet. They won't be reacting to your shots as much. When I feel them tired, I wanna go even harder. It like boosts me like, it's like blood's in the water, and I'm a shark. j -Rod's so unpredictable. You never know what crazy shit he's gonna pull out there. He goes like really calm and soft, and then he tries to snatch up buggy tricks last second, so you always have to be very careful. If he approaches you with that reckless energy, a lot of guys just don't know what to do. I think he's gonna surprise a lot of people out there. All the people I'm gonna be going against in this tournament, fucking well-known, world-class athletes, so I had nothing to lose at all, which is even better for me. I thrive in this environment. Fans can expect heavy wrestling, heavy hand fighting, good takedowns, you know, me taking people's back, and uh, some, some, <laughs> some strangles, yeah. With nothing to lose, Jay plans to shake up the playing field. Hours, 11 minutes before Isaac Michel was able to score the grand prize winning armbar submission. My name is Isaac Michel. I'm a brown belt training out of B Team Academy. 2022 is slowly becoming the year of Isaac Michel. After embarking on the very first Jiu Jitsu reality show, Isaac worked his way through a 16 man submission only bracket. And on the live finale, Prove to the world he is the next big thing in submission grappling. His Who's Next finale match went over two hours, but now he's focused on representing his home country of Australia on grappling's biggest stage. Isaac Michel, he's just won the finals, punched his ticket to the world championships. So Isaac Michel was 30 pounds under the weight division, and yet he went in and he scored a 75% submission rate. I felt confident in my ability to wrestle, so that was the game plan, just to start standing with all those guys and put them down. I feel like I did the right things in terms of strategizing for ADCC, so if I can replicate that sort of style, then I'll be pretty confident going into ADCC. Isaac, he went out there for two hours and just poured on the pressure. He was playing really good anti-jiu-jitsu, what we call it, like not really trying to engage. Says that hands in again. I'm going to try my best anti-jujitsu, so probably upset a lot of people trying to stall the whole time. Hopefully I win and no one talks about the match at all. My game, personally, is probably the best under ADCC rule set. I think I have a good ability to stand, hopefully send some people head over biscuit. You want to break that down? What does it mean to send someone head over biscuit? biscuit? Flip them upside down. <laughs> When COVID happened, I was stuck in Australia for a while and I ran into one of my friends, Jakob, and Jakob is a Savlakian wrestler who competed in the World Championships. He got eighth in the world. We were just wrestling every morning for about six months. So I was really able to pick up a lot of good wrestling from him. From there, I've just been working on it, developing skills. We've had a good amount of wrestlers come into B Team and been wrestling with them, like uh, Jason Nolf and Gino and a lot of guys from Penn State have been coming in. All the guys that wrestle in jiu-jitsu, their wrestling's good and they wrestle with good guys, but they're not Olympic level world-class wrestlers. But I can you know, train with guys that are world-class here and we can get that level of our wrestling higher, 
then it's a way to win these tournaments like ADCC. To be honest, after seeing what Isaac's been able to do on the feet, I'm not sure who's going to have a wrestling advantage over Isaac in the 88 division. People just do not know how good Isaac is. Like, he's legitimately one of the best in the world, and I think he's going to have a big breakout at this ADCC. I think Mateus is very strong. All his fundamentals are very sharp, but I think he doesn't have that world-class wrestling. If I can do well on the feet with him, put him down and then chase backs, then that's sort of the game plan. Ty's going to be the one to be in the final. He's obviously got a lot of momentum right now. He's been winning everything. Unanimous for Red Craig Jones. Craig passed his guard, he took him down and he was able to control him a little bit more. So I'm going to you know, work with Craig leading into this match and we have a game plan. So I think I'll do well. I'm going to train as hard as possible until that day and my goal is to get better every day and if winning ADCC is a byproduct of that then that's pretty fucking sick. <laughs> my name is Tyro Tolo, I'm a black belt under Andre Gavala at Atos Jiu Jitsu headquarters and I'm ranked number one in the 185 and 170 pound weight classes and I'm going to be in the 88 division for ADCC. We got a lot of weight to gain. <laughs> yeah, we're doing. Known for years as the child prodigy, destined to take over submission grappling, the 20-year-old Ty Rutolo has finally arrived at the big show. And with the wind at his back, Ty is ready to fulfill the prophecy and dominate submission grappling for years to come. It all starts on September 17th. Every ADCC, there's always a new person that's debuting that's making history, and Ty Rotolo is gonna make jiu-jitsu and submission fighting history, yeah. the youngest yeah. competitor in the history of ADCC to, to get on the podium. I'm super excited. It's gonna be completely different. You know, the last one, you know, I was a blue belt, you know, so that was a wild experience for me. Ty with the submission attempt at oh, the I end there. Ours. I remember squeezing my darts with Kennedy. It was so perfect, locked in, and I had it, and then like, Dude, he should be tapping, and I just felt all my power just exiting my arms, you know, I just had nothing else to give. The last 30 seconds of the match, he gets to my back and chokes me. I realized you gotta be in the match from the beginning to the end, no matter what. You know, I looked at the time, I was like thinking I could, you know, relax a little bit, and, and I, I paid the price, so. Oh, no, it's and really Rotolo's nasty. Face. Never really uh, been in that situation where I put someone in a submission and I had to keep going after I knew it was broken. I gave it all I had, you know, and it was cool. I, had, I gave, at the time, pretty much one of the best in the world. It's a, a fight like that, you know. The division was 66, you know, a completely different style of, of competitors. 88 division's exciting if there's gonna be guys cutting from like 220, you know, there's gonna be some big boys, so. I've always fought big guys, you know, I'm used to it. I don't really get intimidated by any of them. Technically, I feel like I'm at a different level than those guys, you know, and I just, it's gonna be the physical attributes that, you know, are gonna be in their favor, but, you know, technique should be strength, right? <laughs> That's what Jiu is all about, and if it doesn't, whatever, I'll have a little bit of strength too. These guys are fucking animals. They push the pace, they have good gas tanks, they throw up submissions when no one else is expecting it. You an idiot? Phil is like one of the most excited guys out there. He push a lot. He's gonna be hunting non-stop though for submissions. But I feel my game, it's matched really well with him. I adapted pretty well with everybody. My favorite things to do are takedowns and pass the guard. You know, I have a good game for ADCC. It's exciting, I'm always looking for the submission and scrambling and that's kind of why I built my game the way it is. You know, it's because of ADCC, that's like, that's the golden cup. I have great cardio, you know, and that's one thing that I'll definitely be using a lot in the ADCC. I'm gonna push the pace so hard in every match. You know, every match I'm gonna fight like it's the final, you know, cause that's what I gotta do against these guys. I don't wanna just win it, I wanna smash everyone in the process, you know, that's the goal. I wanna do it in like a fashion that's impressive, not just because I'm there in gold, but you know, the way I did it. When I get the gold medal around my neck, I'm sure it's gonna feel pretty good. It'll, it's something I've been working towards my whole life, and it's just kind of the start. It's my first year at Black Belt, and I wanna win a lot of those.
The name Sean J. Ribeiro is synonymous with jiu-jitsu excellence. The two-time ADCC champion has returned just in time for him to teach these young guns a thing or two about winning. He is one of the greatest grapplers of all time, and this may be his last chance to stand on top. Shanji, I think the history speaks for himself. He's a legend of the sport. He beat, literally beat everyone. Very dangerous, you know, very good standing, amazing guard. As I was competing in jiu-jitsu as a lower belt, I was always looking to him. It would be an honor for me to compete against him. Oh, he's got the neck, but time's gonna run out. It looks like Hulk went out on the buzzer. I have never seen this in a grappling match. Hulk, me and him have a history. Outside the mat, I love that guy. He's a funny guy, but inside the mat, I hate him. <laughs> really tough to compete. Very tough to get things going on him. I feel me and him have the kind of same style. He's very strong, very explosive. He definitely is the toughest guy on my division. I feel my gas tank a lot more bigger than Hulk. Another legend, Wagner, very tough to compete against. He's very uh, verbal. He was like one of the gnarlier, kind of like scarier grapplers, you know, kind of like intimidating, you know, he's like mean the way he grapples. If you go for a single leg, he'll tell you you aren't that close to it, you know. He's always looking to challenge himself and always looking to compete. So that's something that I respect about Wagner and he has so much experience in the game. His style for ADC is quite hard to beat, but I don't think his wrestling is like world class. I feel my style match really well with Wagner. Like I say, I'm pretty hard to score. I'm pretty hard to get things going. I don't think Wagner liked that. I feel a lot of other guys can give me a tougher time than Wagner. It's gonna be the biggest ADCC event they've ever held in, in history. It's the most prestigious event in the world was the Olympics of Jiu-Jitsu and the toughest fighters in the world is going to be fighting there. It's probably the most exciting, you know, submission grappling event of all time. It's the most exciting form of grappling. Everyone's trying to slam each other. The fights are going off the mats. The atmosphere in the crowd is crazy. And just to, to, to be there competing alongside some of the best athletes, uh, you know, on the planet is, is something special itself. Every guy in the division, all of them are really tough. You gotta be from this first second to the last second, be very careful and very cautious of whatever you're gonna do. It's the biggest tournament in the world, so you cannot slip on anyone. We've never had an Australian win ADCC before, so to get a gold medal for Australia is something special. It'll be the first one in history. Gotta beat four people to become the champ. That's the plan, just to smash everyone. I, wouldn't, I don't wanna accept anything less. You know, I don't wanna just win, I wanna smash everyone probably the four hardest matches I'll have in the next couple of years, so I'm gonna go in the best version of myself I've ever been. For these 16 warriors, becoming ADCC champion means everything. When the lights come down in Las Vegas, years of buildup, months of hard work, and decades of history will collide. And when the dust settles, someone will be crowned champion. Who will it be? Find out right here on flowgrappling.com.